Hi guys, how is everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well. I am excited that you're here. Thank you for um, checking out my first official Sunday launch video on my YouTube channel. By this time, I've uploaded a couple other videos that I had done um, previously before launching my channel, but this is my first Sunday content video. The first of many more, so thank you for tuning in. I hope that it serves you well. Um, so, I can't spend a ton of time, but I think that I should be able to cover this in about five minutes. I have to head up to the massage office pretty quick, but I wanted to try to hop on and get a quick little video done about ginger. Um, I kind of went back and forth about what to talk about because I haven't done a lot of videos. There's so much to cover, but um, I am cold. <laughs> It's not even that cold outside yet, and I'm cold. Like, I'm already drinking my afternoon tea and just doing things to try to stay warm. And ginger is one of the things that I find helps with that. There are a couple oils that do too, and I will cover them, cover them maybe in one of the upcoming weeks. But ginger is a really good warming oil. So let me jump in and talk about some of the emotional characteristics of ginger first. It has a really fiery, strong dynamic. Um, it stimulates willpower and restores motivation. Um, this book, I have mentioned this book before in one of my other videos, but if you weren't tuning in then, this Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit by Gabriel Moje is so good. It's especially if you're into the emotional properties of the oils, he does a really good job of um, just talking about that aspect and even getting into a little bit of history on most of the oils going way back to ancient times and talking about how oils and their herbs even were used back in those times. But um, about ginger, I wanted to read this one little part that I ran across in this in this book, it says, ginger oil is therefore indicated for those who may have clear plans and good intentions, but who lack the personal drive and optimism to manifest initiative or take real immediate action. Such individuals tend to procrastinate or doubt themselves, waiting for others to spur them on. They are frequently disconnected from their physical body and may shy away from vigorous and sustained activity. So that part jumped out at me because I can really relate to it, especially the part about procrastination. So if uh, you're on my page and any of those things stuck out to you like they did me, you may want to check out Ginger. So it also helps combat burnout and it's just super warming and really encourages a sense of energy. And who doesn't need most of those things like as the weather changes and you kind of get into that mode where you just want to like eat and stay under a blanket. So ginger can, can really help keep you warm and keep your energy going during this time. So now that I talked about just a couple of the emotional properties, I want to talk a little bit about the therapeutic properties of ginger. It's used in traditional medicine for pain relief and inflammation and also to support digestion. Topical application and inhalation have both um, been shown in studies to relieve nausea and vomiting. I can also um, provide documentation for anybody who is interested or wants to take it to that level, the names of, of the studies so that you can look those up and see the actual documentation of what was studied. Um, and some of you mamas may know from, you know, the early stages of pregnancy that ginger is a good thing to use during those early kind of sick and nauseous days. Um, so as a side note, though, if you if you do want to use ginger for that purpose, shoot me a message or comment on here and, and I will make sure that I get you the right information about how to properly dilute so that you're doing it safe for pregnancy. So it's also been shown in studies that ginger can support the body's immune response. It's also a rubefacient, which means that you can apply it to the skin and it can result in an increase in blood flow. It's, so it's really good for helping um, warm cold hands and feet. So what are some of the practical ways that you can use ginger? You can use it in a cream or carrier oil and apply it right to the belly if you are experiencing um, digestive discomfort or you want to relieve nausea. 
You could also make an immune supporting cream or oil. You could combine ginger, frankincense, lavender, and lemongrass. Those are a good kind of powerhouse team to help support the immune system and that's a nice effective blend for something like that. You can also put it in a blend to support your joints and muscles. Um, swollen, swollen joints, inflamed muscles, um, things of that nature. Ginger is really good to help comfort those conditions. So the last thing that I have to say about ginger is remember me mentioning that it has a fiery strong dynamic? I do mean strong, like really strong. Make no mistake that just a drop or two of ginger is plenty. Even if just from a, a sense of smell perspective, start small. Um, I made that mistake in my early days of use, using ginger, not knowing exactly how strong it was and putting too much into a blend and then trying to counteract it and cover it up with other things. And once you put too much, there's just no going back. So make sure that you start small. Um, typically, when I make my blends, I use a one ounce bottle. And um, when I start out, actually, I never use more than three drops of ginger. I'll start out with like one or two and then never go to more, to, more than three. So that is what I have to say about ginger today. I hope that this helps you and I hope that if you try it, you find it warming and comforting in these cold coming months. And um, thanks again for tuning in and have a great day.